of Junior's goal is to have young students getting into robotics and doing computer science so that in the future they're going to go into major league to compete, to support the advancement of robotics, but also for the other students. Uh, we really want to promote STEM through robotics and computer science so that we have more students actually going into that field. RoboCup actually started as a, a demonstration and some of the uh, researchers from RoboCup and then some of the teachers from Australia got together and then started RoboCup Junior in 2000. And then we moved to different countries and cities following major leagues. So it's a coexisting event of RoboCup. RoboCup Junior has a soccer league and a rescue league. It's the same as major. And then also we have something called CoSpace, which is a competition that uses a simulation, but also a real robot to do communication and, and a competition with robots. But also we have something called OnStage, which is the stage performance, but also there are some tasks that they have to do. And so it was actually started out as a dance competition. Uh, RoboCup on stage is one of the initial leagues that started RoboCup Junior uh, and it's been there all the way through uh, and it was very much about giving another, we had the soccer and we had the rescue and this is giving a more creative opportunity um, for the students to get involved in robotics. RoboCup on stage is uh, it's about a battle performance, it's about the teams producing a robotic performance and the idea is to use innovative new technologies or different technologies in different ways to produce a robotic performance. It has to be autonomous, which means it's not remote controlled, it's not radio controlled, but we are looking for human computer interaction and we're also looking for computer computer interaction. Uh, RoboCup on stage is exciting because they can create their own uh, robotic performances um, and they can use any materials they like, they can use any size of robots, they can use any number of robots. So whereas things like soccer and uh, rescue, you've just got one robot or you've got two robots for soccer. Now, you, so some of them will have, so we have performances here that had about 15, 16 robots, maybe little ones, you may have just one two, big, large humanoid robot. Um, so it's very creative, very different style. You have no idea what each one's going to produce. Here we have the bather. It's made by a Lego NXT brain and two large motors. We interact, interact with the robot in the stage. I think it's um, cool that you can be creative and you can do this all by yourself and you can do, and you have ideas and then you can make it. I think that's really cool. The Junior Soccer League has been around for a number of years and from the beginning uh, they were developing something like it was really simple but right now you can see how advanced they are. They are using a green carpet before it was just a grey and black floor so they could see where they were. Now they have to use the green carpet and they have to detect other things in the fields. And the robots now are able to use vision, they are able to detect different things with the camera. So it's been, it been a challenge since the RoboCup Junior Soccer started and they are really advanced right now. The idea of soccer is that two robots have to play against another two robots using a ball that emits a specific light. It's an infrared light. So the robot can detect that ball and they have, they should, they have to try to put that ball in the opposite goal. And that is for the individual games, even for level primary, secondary and openly. And then we have also the super team games and they are playing a bigger field. And what they do is like we put different teams together from different countries. And what they have to do is create a strategy together. We, we want them to communicate and create something new every year. So what is important for us is that they are actually to do something different in the competition, not only before. So during the competition, they have to work together with the other team members in the super team and create a new strategy for the big field. When, when I feel really proud is when they actually are able to finish in the junior and they go to the major and they are able to, to make something for the major league. We look at these robots and we see so a goalie and a striker, a football player, but what we work here, the sensors, uh, all that is done, it can be used, oh, every little part can be used in a different way. For example, for medicine, and uh, I don't know, it can do anything. So we have actually two different challenges. 
One is the one behind me that is rescue line. We have another one that, that is rescue maze. So in general, what we have is like in rescue line, it's a small scenario for the, they have a robot that has to go through the city. Actually, we have a line, but in this line, you can have like spare spaces, you can find like obstacles, you can find speed bumps. So a lot of hard things for them. So the robot needs to navigate through all the, the, the maze to get to the end zone, that is like the victim area. So actually the victims are some small balls that they have to cut and they have to put in, in the hospital. That is actually a, a triangle at the end of the area that is like the way that they have to keep it there. So that's the main idea of Rescue Line. We have another challenge that is Rescue Maze. This is pretty amazing because it's like a labyrinth. So the road needs to have like some kind of artici artificial intelligence to do it. So the road needs to navigate through all the labyrinth. He also is going to find like obstacles, speed bumps, like dead areas where the robot cannot go inside. But the special thing here is that they have to find big teams. There are like some uh, small elements heated. So it's actually they have to find like the human temperature big teams. So they have to give them a rescue kit and the robot needs to go all the, the labyrinth to do it. So yeah, that's a general idea. So here we have taken a variety of terrains that are part of the uh, NIST standard test methods for response robots, and we put them together into an arena that students can run their robots through and collect points along the way. The idea is, is that as they collect the points, they're demonstrating their abilities to overcome these various standard test methods that are also the same as used by bomb squads and military all around the world. And so the results are directly comparable. Uh, so this was a competition started about last year with NIST and uh, RoboCup uh, Haifei China. This was meant to be create and promote smaller robots rather than the bigger college level robots. So the whole point of this competition is to have high school and college kids come up with 3D printed and easily replaceable designs which will hopefully be able to be used for future search and rescue purposes. So instead of sending a $100,000 robot, you can send a couple hundred dollar robot or a thousand dollar robot into a situation where it might get destroyed. Our robot's uh, its name is Professor. Um, we started building it about a month ago, so this has been a bit of a time crunch. It's, it's really kind of been a journey because it's been such, we started Personally, we were in robotics for this past year. He was in robotics two years ago. And so this is a huge deal for us because this has really been like what we've been working for all year. So. We've had about a month to design and build and program all of it. Um, and second was we've been in three different areas of uh, the world. Suki's been in Nigeria and Karen's been in New York. I've been in Maryland uh, the entire time we've been building this. So it's been, it's been tough. Um, well, we, we pulled it together and this is what we got. The best thing about RoboCup is meeting other people with the same interests as you and being able to explore uh, all different kinds of robotics. When you fail, keep going because you will fail. You will make many mistakes. Keep trying to create what you want to create and eventually it'll all work out with some hard work. I've been involved in RoboCup since 2003, so and I've always found every year to be very, very exciting in the various roles that I've been fortunate enough to take. Here, the most exciting thing for me is looking at the enthusiasm that these young students have for developing new capabilities. They are tackling challenges that have not been properly solved in the real world. They are developing solutions that are innovative. They're developing solutions that are world class. Now, of course, they still have a long way to go in developing these. And of course, as young researchers, they still have a lot to learn. But just seeing that initial spark, seeing how they can look at a problem and they realize this is a problem that hasn't been properly solved and they're working on it. This is exciting. <laughs>